What do e-boys, fanboys, European tryhards, Eastern European screamers and nostalgic ex-CS GO players have in common? They're all stuck in Valorant lobbies together, creating a perfect storm of chaos, cringe and comedy. If you've ever wondered why your matches feel like a bad sitcom, you're about to find out. Stick around as we break down the 5 types of Valorant players that make every game an adventure. First up, we've got the cringe e-boys. These creatures are easy to spot, or should I say here, their distinctive mating call echoes through the servers with the subtlety of a foghorn. It's like they're perpetually stuck in a monster energy commercial, hyped up on caffeine and the sound of their own voices. These e-boys are the living embodiment of that one kid in class who always had to be the center of attention. They're not content with just playing the game. They need to narrate every single action like they're the star of their own Twitch stream. But wait, there's more. Enter the fanboys, the yin to the e-boys young. These elusive creatures have mastered the art of gender bending cosplay faster than they've mastered their aim. Picture this, a dude with a voice deeper than the Mariana Trench, dressed up as Sage, complete with a schoolgirl skirt and cat ears. It's a sight that'll make you question whether you accidentally stumbled into a convention's cosplay contest instead of a Valorant match. These fanboys aren't just playing Valorant, they're living their best eager life. They've turned every match into a TikTok waiting to happen. Can someone buy me a Vandal? They coo, in a voice that switches between bass and falsetto faster than Jet can dash. And don't even get me started on the e-dating. If I had a dollar, for every time I've seen I miss her and I miss him as duo names, I could buy Riot Games and ban this behavior myself. Now here's where it gets really interesting. When these two species interact, it's like watching a nature documentary directed by a drunk Michael Bay. The e-boys in their natural state of perpetual hype see the fanboys as the ultimate challenge. Suddenly their let's go turns into my lady, may I escort you to B-side. It's a cringe fest of epic proportions, a perfect storm of awkward flirting and failed clutches. You thought those NA lobbies were wild? That's cute. Let me introduce you to the EU servers where the real madness begins. On one side we have the super tryhards. These guys are so focused, they probably pee in bottles to avoid bathroom breaks. They communicate exclusively in callouts, treating every round like it's the world championship final. But wait, there's more. Enter the Eastern European shouters, nature's answer to the question, what if we gave a volcano a microphone? These guys don't just talk, they erupt. Every round starts with a crescendo of curses in languages you didn't even know existed. Lose the pistol round, prepare for a verbal apocalypse that would make a sailor blush. And just like that, your eardrums are bleeding and you're wondering if Riot's report system has a potential hearing damage option. Now imagine these two species in the same lobby. The tryhard is meticulously calling out enemy positions, while the Eastern European shouter is screaming about someone's mother and threatening to uninstall. It's beautiful chaos. Round start. The tryhard opens with let's execute A, smoke heaven, flash sight, I'll... The tryhard bless his heart tries to regain control. No, stick to the plan, we need to, but it's too late. The Eastern Storm has been unleashed and half the team is already charging B like a herd of caffeinated rhinos. The result? A clusterfuck of epic proportions. The tryhards are having aneurysms trying to salvage their carefully crafted strategies while the shouters are creating enough noise pollution to violate international treaties. But despite all this chaos, or maybe because of it, EU servers produce some of the most skilled players in the world. It's like the crucible of toxicity and tryhard energy forges Valorant pros. Who knew that the secret to getting good was a healthy dose of hearing loss and stress-induced ulcers? While EU servers forge new talent, another group is slowly going extinct. You've probably met them, those players who can't stop talking about their CSGO rank from 2016. But here's the real question. In a game that's constantly evolving, can these dinosaurs adapt or are they doomed to fade into gaming history? Enter the endangered ex-pros, the living fossils of Valorant. These are the players who still think it's 2016 and NIP is the team to beat. They're like that uncle who can't stop talking about his high school football glory days, except instead of touchdowns, it's all about their sick AWP flicks. These ex-pros are stuck in a time warp, desperately trying to relive their glory days. They'll regale you with tales of their face level 10 rank and how they once played a pug with Get Right. It's like watching a nature documentary about a species that refuses to evolve. These dinosaurs are struggling to adapt to Valorant's unique ecosystem. They're like cavemen trying to operate a smartphone. What do you mean I can wallbang through the entire map? This game is broken. No, buddy, you're just playing the wrong game. The interactions between these ancient beasts and the new breeds of Valorant players are comedy gold. Imagine an ex-pro trying to explain the intricacies of pop flashes to a raised main who just wants to send her bot to his death. It's like watching a grandpa try to teach TikTok dances. Painfully awkward, but you can't look away. So how do you survive this clusterfuck? Simple. Embrace the chaos. Treat every match like a comedy show where you're both the audience and the reluctant star. And remember, behind every screaming 12-year-old and cosplaying weirdo is a person just trying to have fun. Or ruin yours. Either way, you must watch this next video now. Subscribe here and also on Twitch. Arrivederci.